Hey, what's up everybody? So I had gotten a suggestion on one of my videos to do a Vedic Astrology reading on the chart of Adolf Hitler. And I thought that was a good idea. And I'm also offering 12 house readings for people. So this is a pretty much a good example of what you'll get in a 12 house reading. Although I won't be focusing much on, on Adolf's um, love and like a mother, father kind of stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit, but uh, yeah. If anybody wants those, a 12 house reading or thunder astrology reading or a nine world rune reading, just go to greg.thunderwizard.com. And uh, so, yeah, let's get right into it. So this is the chart of Adolf Hitler. And if you'll notice, all of the stuff that's written in red, it has got it starts with an A. That means aspect. So these houses are getting aspects from all these planets when you see this, this A. And everything in blue is actually planets that are sitting in those houses. So um, first, and the, the numbers too represent the signs in uh, Vedic astrology. So the number seven represents the seventh sign of the zodiac. So that's the sign of Libra. So he is a Libra ascendant. And, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten, and so on in the order of the, the zodiac signs. So uh, let's get right into it. So he is a Libra ascendant. And, you know, Libra ascendants, they're all about balance in life, finding balance in life. And they're all about the relationships with other people. It's the original ruler of the seventh house, which is about relationships with people. It's about uh, business contracts. It represents the law, represents law and order, upholding justice. And, um, you know, this is why Libras are, can be very good as uh, political leaders, um, revolutionary types, you know, people that stand up for the rights of other people. And, uh, you know, he was a very uh, political, politically empowered kind of a person. And uh, so we can't talk about his ascendant without talking about all these aspects that he's got. He's got a bunch of aspects coming from the seventh house and the uh, the ninth house. So we'll start. I'm going to start off with um, this um, this aspect from Mercury. You notice these first four aspects are coming from his seventh house of relationships with other people. You know this is um so first of all he's getting that aspect from Mercury. Mercury's in the sign of Aries right here in the seventh house. Aries is all about that leadership quality with other people. Mercury is all about the intellect. So that that intellect is getting stimulated in terms of talking with other people. And we want to see which houses does Mercury rule. Mercury is ruling over here the ninth house of philosophy, spirituality, uh, spreading that wisdom. It's got Rahu in there too, so it's bringing that worldly desire to share that with everybody. It's got the, an aspect from the moon, which is bringing that emotional connection to, to wanting to share that. Jupiter's bringing that optimism, that hope, that ability to really want to share that. Rahu, Rahu is also, you know, can bring that um, that delusionary kind of a malefic energy to him, where it's, you know, I want to form my own spirituality, my own philosophy. I want to share it with everybody. Mercury's also ruling the, the 12th house over here in the sign of Virgo. And the 12th house is, again, uh, it's a spirituality. It's the imagination. It's uh, where you choose to expend your energy. It's uh, bed pleasures as well because, you you know, you're burning energy. So that, you know, he's very uh, calculating with the sign of Virgo where he, where he chooses to uh, share his energy with people, where he's sharing his intellect with people. All that is looking at his ascendant. And then we got the sun right here. Uh, by the way, these, um, these uh, planets in this order represent that Mercury has the lowest degrees all the way up to Venus has the highest degrees. The planet with the lowest degrees has the most say. And uh, I'll get in more into that when I finish with all these. So he's getting an aspect from the Sun as well over here. Sun is in the sign of Aries and Sun is exalted in the sign of Aries, meaning that it's very, it's very much be having that leadership quality with other people. It's very overpowering with other people. It really wants to uh, give orders to people. Be a leader, you know, get that energy moving through the sign of Aries. Sun owns the the ninth house, the eleventh house of um, of our network circle of people. So his ego is shining a lot when he's really looking to find that network circle of people that are connected to, you know, politics, justice, law and order. His view of law and order, and um, that's looking at his ascendant too. So that's empowering his personality with that sun, with that worldly leadership quality. Then we got the sign of Mars here. Mars is in the sign of Aries, it's in its own sign. 
So Mars is very comfortable right there as well. And you know, Mars is all about our direct energy, giving direct energy to that leadership quality, to the intellect, to overpowering other people. In personal relationships, these are kind of, these can be bad for personal relationships, but when it comes to like political power, this brings a lot of strength. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean positive strength either as well. You know, it could mean that negative, negative kind of strength, which we know that's what he had. And uh, Mars, which, which house is Mars ruling? Mars is ruling the second house over here in the sign of Scorpio, and that's its own sign. And, and it's also getting that aspect from Mars too. The, the second house represents family, it represents our speech, it represents our security in the world, materialistic security, um, relationship security. But you know, that, that speech is getting empowered with the, the sign of Scorpio, bringing, bringing a lot of emotional passion to the way he talks and speaks. You know, it's that direct energy, that martial energy from Mars is coming and, you know, really giving him a lot of strength. And Mars's aspect is just empowering it even more. And all that energy is going into how he deals with other people, overpowers them, and is looking at his ascendant, which is make, giving his personality that desire to do that. Then we got Venus. Venus is the original ruler of Libra, and it's you know, but it's got the lowest degrees, you know, so it has the least amount of say. Mercury has the most amount of say here, but Mercury is a small, very small planet. It has a you know, little less gravity than the Sun and Mars. But Sun is exalted in Aries, so Sun is kind of overpowering Mercury. Mars is in its own sign of Aries. And, you know, Mars and the Sun are, are you know, they're joining forces right here and giving that martial leadership, direct energy. Venus has got the lowest degree, so, and it's looking at its ascendant, but it can't really do much when it's, when it's getting overpowered by these other signs, these other planets. But, um, so we got Venus. Venus owns the ascendant. Venus owns the eighth house, too. So for all Libra ascendants in Vedic astrology, the Venus rules the uh, the ascendant and the eighth house of occult knowledge, you know the mysteries of life and death, the unconscious going deep inside. So that's why Libras are very can be very connected to the occult, and you know sharing that energy with people, upholding justice through um, astrology, you know being psychic, what have you, stuff like that. So that that kind of energy is going into this house of relationships and it's looking at his ascendant so and you know that's you know that's bring, bringing a lot of passion to what he believes in and how he shares it with people and you know that we again that strength from the sun and the mars is very strong and then he's getting this aspect from rahu rahu is in the ninth house of gemini gemini represents our speech and the ninth house is all about sharing our philosophies our spirituality rahu can bring that delusion with uh, philosophy, spirituality. You know, it makes them can make a person think. You know, I'm going to create my own spirituality, my own philosophies of life, and I want to share it. I want to be the first one that shares it with everybody because it's looking at his ascendant. You know, the moon aspect is bringing that that emotional connection to it. You know, he's very passionate. He feels very strongly about what he believes in, even though it's delusion. Jupiter is bringing that hope and optimism to what he believes in. You know, I know I'm right, even though Rahu can be, you know, encouraging that, you know, yeah, you know, create your own form of spirituality. You know, go into the, the, your own view of what you think it is, you know. So that all that, Rahu is, is looking at his um, ascendant as well and bringing that energy into his, into his personality. So all of this is just bringing his personality into this, you know, very overpowering leader who's very strong, very convicted into what he believes in spiritually, philosophically. He wants to be the one that shares it with everybody. You know, he wants to be, he wants to present it to everybody. He wants to shine his identity, his ego through this personality. So that's, uh, you know, Libras are all about balance, but, you know, you get all these challenges here. It's pretty difficult, you know. You know, he does have these aspects in the seventh house of Jupiter as well, bringing that optimism, you know, bringing that belief in what he believes in, whether it's positive or negative. K2, K2's aspect coming from uh, the third house is bringing that heavy um, ability to research. You know, how can I really relate to other people? How can I get them to believe in what I believe in? You know, how can I get them on my side? And, uh, you know, he's getting that aspect from Saturn. Saturn's over here in the tenth house. Saturn's in the 10th house in the sign of Cancer. 
and it's getting that aspect from Mars. But Saturn, Saturn's uh, tenth aspect is going into the seventh house here too, and you know that's bringing that could bring a lot of um, organization, a lot of discipline into him. You know, it's coming from the tenth house, so that's like his reputation. It's in the sign of Cancer, so he's thinking. You know, he can be like worried. You know, what are people gonna think of me? You know, I really gotta get organized. I really gotta be prepared. You know, it brings that fear, that anxiety to him, and all of that. All this stuff is looking over at his ascendant. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, malefic, empowering kind of aspects looking at his, going into his personality, how he presents this Libra ascendant energy into the world. And, you know, you know, that, you know he can turn it around and be a positive person if he's being, pursuing, you know, his true joys in life. However, you know, we know he didn't, he wasn't doing that. So all these malefic aspects are going to start really emanating out of him because of that. And um, this ascendant, the ascendant affects all of the houses, you know, it's, it's going to affect everything. That's basically the foundation of the chart. It's, it's looking at all these other houses. So we go over to the second house. As I was saying, he, he has a Scorpio in the second house, represents his family. The sign of Scorpio, so he can be very um, protective of his family, you know, um, whoever they are, you know, he can defend them, you know, he's very emotionally connected to them. This is also a house of um, secrets. Well, it's, I mean, it's not a house of secrets. The Scorpio sign is a house of secrets, so he could have like he could hold secrets about his family. I remember, um, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, uh, George Carlin, the comedian, he would talk about. Adolf Hitler and he would say you know a lot of people say Hitler had a lot of balls he goes that's not true he only had one <laughs> you know I don't know if he had that deformity if that's really true or not but you know it was a secret but eventually it got out and I, I think I remember hearing too about I heard about this years ago 20 years ago or something that I think he had like some Jewish people in his family too you know I mean, I'm pretty sure he was trying to hide that back in the day too you know and uh, this is also like I was saying it's a house of speech and it's ruled by Mars, which is very comfortable in the sign of Aries. It's getting the aspect of Mars. It's getting that eighth aspect of Mars. So that represents that that fearlessness. When it comes to his speech, you know, he's really direct energy. He's really saying what's on his mind and very passionate about it and getting getting it out there, you know, and he's not letting anything stop him from speaking his mind. Then we got his third house. The third house represents communication on all levels, uh, writing. Uh, speech and uh, it represents your courage your willpower and it's in the sign of Sagittarius Sagittarius is all about sharing your wisdom your philosophy your spirituality it's a fire sign so it's another again more passion more energy you know to, to share that stuff and uh, moon has the lowest degrees K2 has the highest degrees moon has the lowest degrees, so it has the most say but moon is a very receptive planet so it's it pretty much takes on the energies of other planets that are in its conjunct in the, in the same house that it's in. So, but Moon is bringing that passionate energy to teaching his philosophy, his spirituality, you know. And like we were saying, Rahu in the ninth house is bringing that delusion of his philosophy, spirituality. But he's very passionate about it. And Jupiter's bringing that optimism. You know, Jupiter's in its own sign here in Sagittarius, which should make him be more more of a positive person, you know, and sharing real wisdom real spirituality, real philosophy. However, that didn't happen with him, you know. And um, but you know it, it could bring optimism into whatever he believes in, you know. You know, he's very um you know, he has a lot of faith in what he believes in. And uh you know, Ketu here is showing um Ketu can bring that narrow-mindedness to what he believes in, to what his philosophy, his spirituality is. You know, it could bring that like a terrorist, you know, only believes in one thing about um, what God is, and you know, it's gonna, he's gonna go out, she, he or she's gonna go out there and do their thing and kill everybody, and you know, that's the way it is. You know, K2 also represents, you know, that, um, that detachment brings that, um, dissatisfaction. It also means that he mastered this third house before in another life. You know, so he was a very strong communicator in another life. He had that natural ability to be a communicator, and, um, you know, but he still has some of that desire in this life to do that. And, you know, it shows here, you know, the moon, the moon's bringing that, like I was saying about the moon and Jupiter. Uh, let's get over to, um, yeah, let's go over to the fourth house now. The fourth house is 
is represents the home it represents the homeland represents how you were raised you know the the things you find comforting in life and it's in the sign of capricorn so this could represent like he had a, a strict uh, upbringing from the mother she was very strict with um you know teaching him about you know if you want to go out into the world and get get what you want you know you got to work hard and be organized and well prepared and all that stuff he's getting the aspect from saturn saturn's in the sign of cancer cancer represents the mother too as well and you know saturn's looking over at at its own sign and that you know that bringing bringing more of that that saturn energy that strictness to the mother it could also bring that fear the fear too with the emotions you know fear of the mother you know um being dissatisfied with what she's saying uh you know you could really get into it as well too you know get into the discipline the organization that's coming from her and uh you know he can spread this to his children too I, didn't he have children i don't even remember it's been so long since i've watched documentaries on hitler probably 20 years too i don't know i'm not even interested anyway but uh yeah if he had chil children he could share that kind of discipline with them as well and uh we'll go over to the fifth house the fifth house is in the sign of aquarius and it, the um, you know also ruled by saturn you know the fifth house represents your your education it represents your children as well and um speculative business it also represents um ancient text being interested in ancient text we got saturn here bringing that discipline wanting to uh explore ancient text being very um interested in going deep with that you know he's getting that aspect of rahu again the ninth aspect of rahu is all about wanting to teach and spread that philosophy rahu can bring that malefic aspect too that delusion you know exploring ancient text looking at ancient texts and thinking you know the swastika i want to put a new meaning to the swastika i'm going to i'm going to add this whole new viewpoint of what it re really represents you know it's going to represent what i want to believe in i'm going to share my new spirituality to the world and you know you can't do that you know you can't change a um a symbol like that you can't change the energy of that symbol what it really means you know that energy of the swastika was channeled to human beings and it already had the the fabric of the universe the energetic vibration of of its meaning onto it you know transformation it represents transformation you know he tried to make it represent something else and that didn't happen you know represent transformation and that's what happened with him he got transformed you know and um you know so this can be very um this could make him also disciplined with um his education you know when it's time to work when it's time to play you know at this time i'm gonna go skiing you know for two hours and then after that i'm gonna go do this and explore and go talk to these politicians and you know very very strictly scheduled with this stuff and he can also pass that on to his children as well when we go over to the the 12th house this is the sign of pisces the, the sixth the 12th the sixth house the sixth house the 12th out the 12th um the 12 number the number 12 represents the sign of pisces and uh you know the, the sixth house represents enemies debts diseases you know pisces right here can really um you know it can like neutralize enemies you know where where you want to work with enemies where you want to um you want to neutralize enemies with like your philosophies in life you know because jupiter it, it's being ruled by jupiter jupiter's in that house of communication over here but it's also with k2 as well too and um what was i going to say about jupiter um you know this can be a case with him being you know he, this very malefic ascendant you know this is like um keep your what is that saying keep your friends close but keep your enemies closer you know where he um you know he's getting enemies to to you know he's talking with them and communicating with them and getting them on his side to get what he wants you know he's very thinking about things where he planned out about it you know he has he can have that narrow-minded view from k2 and jupiter right here together the moon also brings that ups and downs over here too as well you know with the, the confidence of his communicative abilities but uh yeah that's what i was saying about this in terms of uh enemies you know and diseases uh i remember i think i remember him saying you know he had some problems I remember showing they're showing footage of hitler like his hand would be shaking and um you know he had doctors that were shooting him up with methamphetamine and vitamins and you know what i mean he was totally getting the wrong 
uh, type of treatment for uh, any uh, diseases that he had, physical problems and stuff, you know. And we can see that through the, the K2 Jupiter moon conjunction here. You know, also with this, these conjunctions, speaking of this, um, the third house, this can make somebody very intuitive, you know, in a positive way. You know, somebody who's very deep with, um, you know, really looking at other people and, uh, you know, like being a psychic, being a, an astrologer or whatever. But, you know, the intuitive powers are very strong with this conjunction. You know, whether they're going to use them for good or bad, you know, that depends on all these other factors. But we see this ascendant right here is pretty malefic, you know, so he's not really using that stuff in a good way. Then we were going to the seventh house, you know, I was explaining the whole seventh house thing right here. Um, you know, as far as um, his spouse, I'm pretty sure he was married, right? But he didn't, didn't he have a, a mistress on the side too? But this can make the spouse um, very fo uh, a self-centered kind of a person, very energetic, very much trying to tell him to, you know, stop thinking about other people so much, you know, focus on the self. Someone who's very direct in communicating with him, uh, very passionate about that as well, you know, in terms of him too, you know, and this makes for a very powerful political person doesn't make uh too good for uh, personal relationships though with all this this malefic planets and stuff being there you know but in terms of uh, upholding his distorted view of justice of politics all that this makes for a powerful conjunction that's looking at his ascendant then we got his eighth house we got his eighth house is in the sign of taurus again ruled by his um his his uh, ascendant lord venus and, uh, you know, the eighth house is really gives him that interest in the occult, in, um, you know, the mysteries of life and death, in, interested in astrology. And I, he had astrologers. I believe it was he had Western astrologers. Um, I don't think he had any Vedic, but he was into the occult. You know, he was trying to spread the his view of uh, spirituality to his people. He was trying to spread it to the world eventually, you know. Uh, I think he was teaching vegetarianism and all that, all kinds of different kinds of stuff, you know. And he's very fixed on that, being uh, being a Taurus, the Earth sign. You know, he's very stable in what he believes in. Again, even if it's a narrow-minded, uh, you know, delusional Rahu kind of a viewpoint of what spirituality is, he's he's very stable in that, and you know, he's convicted in it. You know, he's very confident in it. And we got that ninth house again in the sign of Gemini. Ninth house, all about philosophy, spirituality, higher wisdom. It also represents um, long distance uh, travel as well. He's got the sign of Rahu there. Rahu is really expanding, bringing that worldly desire to share philosophy, wisdom. It could be a distorted view, like I was saying, Rahu totally distorting him, um, you know, make, making him form his own spirituality, taking the swastika, making, putting new meaning on it, spreading that to all his, all his people. He's very passionate about it with the aspect of the moon. Jupiter's bringing that optimism as well into what he believes in. And his everyday communication is always associated with this, his own philosophy, his own spirituality. We got his 10th house. 10th house is a sign of cancer. And um, the 10th house is all about your reputation in the outer world, your fame, how other people see you. The sign of cancer is a can be a very uh, like a diplomatic kind of a, a of a of a sign it you know it brings service to people you know just like libra is all about relationships with people this is bringing that service energy to a libra ascendant you know it's wanting and cancer represents the homeland as well it's the original ruler of the fourth house and he's got saturn here too saturn saturn is all about you know upholding justice upholding the law so this really makes another another powerful connect uh, connection to being a, a politician, representing the homeland, upholding the law, you know, defending the people, taking care of the people because of cancer, you know, wanting to nurture the people. The you know the yeah I, I said before cancer represents the original home of the fourth house, which represents the homeland, and he's got the aspect of Mars here too as well. He's getting the the fourth aspect of Mars, which is the homeland, defending the homeland. You know, giving the direct energy to want to accomplish whatever he believes about defending the homeland. Saturn is also, you know, it brings that fear, that anxiety, you know, to the reputation, you know. You know, so he's really getting prepared, you know, he's getting organized, you know, as he get older, get it after the the mid thirties, somewhere around there, you know, Saturn starts to really help you in these kinds of things. You know. But Saturn's you know, Saturn's a malefic planet too, so it can 
it can affect you in a negative way too if you're not really pursuing your your soul's joy and all that and we know he wasn't so that's that 10th house then we go over to his 11th house his 11th house represents the uh, 11th house represents the network circle of people uh, social circle as well as business circle and he's got the sign of Leo here and um, Leo is really saying that that um in order for him to get the proper proper network circle of people that are interested in politics because he's got the sun in the seventh house of politics the law you know he's really got to shine he's got to shine his ego his identity you know the sun represents that shining energy you know i'm the center of attention i'm gonna get get what i want you know i'm gonna attract the right people people are gonna notice him when he's when he's out socializing and talking with people you know the, you know this this guy's got leadership quality you know he's got the power to to get what he wants you know he really believes in what he believes in he's getting that aspect of jupiter he's getting the ninth aspect of jupiter which represents that teaching philosophy you know it represents the optimism you know brings more confidence into whatever he believes in even if it's negative you know you know so it brings that that optimism to his confidence to his ego shining his ego you know being very firm in in his identity and attracting the right people K2, K2 is also that ninth aspect as well. K2 is representing that research, going deep into research. You know, how can I really get what I want? You know, how can I really shine my ego? How do I, how do I attract these proper people to me? You know, to um, get, get them to work for me, to get what I want, you know, to form all these um, new philosophies, these new forms of spirituality, to, dom to dominate the world. You know, how, how can I do that? Then we go over to his 12th house, and we got uh, the sign of Virgo. The 12th house represents the spirituality, the imagination. It represents uh, donations. It's a house of isolation. And it's uh, how I was saying earlier, it's about energy expenditure, where you spend your expend your energy. It also represents the bed pleasures because, you know, you, you expend your energy when you're, you know, in bed with somebody. And, uh, you know, the sign of Virgo here. The sign of Virgo with the aspect of Saturn, you know, Saturn's really bringing that, you know, again, that organization, that discipline. Early on in life, it's bringing that fear, you know, it's bringing delay into, uh, you know, where do I, where can I expend my energy, you know. As he gets older, you know, he's starting to learn how to use this energy. Think about, you know, Virgo represents the intellect. So he's like, you know, where can I, he's, he's very, being very calculating where he expends his energy. You know, if I, you know, if I go communicate with these people from Japan, you know, and get them on my side, you know, make them think that I'm with them, you know, I'm, am I going to get what I want from doing that? You know, I'm going to get them to conquer all this land. And, you know, eventually he's going to take over, you know, he's going to, he's going to weed them out too, you know, and they're not, they're not the right ethnicity about what he's looking for in life. And, you know, so, so that's what happens right there. You know, as far and as far as spirituality goes, though, too, this can make a make a person very um, intellectually connected to spirituality. You know, someone who can go deep into spirituality, into altered states of consciousness, and come out of it, and then be able to talk about it. You know, explain it in a very intellectual way. And you know, Saturn's bringing that patience, that organization to those thoughts. You know. But, you know, of course, I was saying him before, you know, he's got this Rahu here bringing all that delusion about spirituality, philosophy. You know, he really wanted to create his own uh, new world order. And, you know, he wanted to dominate the whole world. You know, we can see that through this whole chart right here. You know, all these malefic things going on. And, um, yeah, uh, so that's basically uh, a reading of his uh, birth chart right here. And, um, yeah, if anybody's uh, interested in getting... Um, one of these 12 house readings you know i'll go more in more into detail about um love and you know career mother father kind of stuff um yeah just go to uh, greg.thunderwizard.com for a 12 house reading for a thunder astrology reading for a nine world rune reading and uh yeah hope you guys uh have a good one we'll talk to you later peace